In this video, you'll see how to set up drop down lists in Excel, where you can choose from a first drop down, and then the next one depends on what you've selected in that first one, and so on. So now we're at the third one, where we can only see items from Canada, and a fourth level, where we see cities for the Ontario region. This is Deborah Dalgleish from Contextures.com, and I'll show you how to set this up. This is the data entry sheet, and I've got data validation set up here where we're choosing from these drop down lists. There's another sheet called lists, and on here we have a big table with a column that shows our first drop downs, which are the regions, and then for each of those regions, we have a list of countries, and for some of the countries, like UK, France, we've got more lists that give us our third drop down. So from the UK, you could choose England. And then for England, we have a list of cities. For France, we've got a lot of regions. For the US, just a few, but we could add all 50 of the states if we wanted to. We've just got Washington and California. But if we set up a state name here, we could then add a column and show some cities in that state. So what we're going to create is a very flexible setup that will let you put in as much as you need to create these customized dependent drop down lists. You've seen the completed workbook with the dependent drop downs and now you're going to see how to set it up from scratch. So this is a new workbook. I have two sheets, data entry and lists. And on the data entry sheet, I just put the four column headings where we're going to select items from the drop down lists. So regions, country, area, and city. And I'm just going to put a X right there just to create a, a beginning for this row. I'll get rid of that later. But we're going to change this to a named table. So select any cell in the heading and on the home tab, go to format as table and select the style that you would like. So it's selected the correct cells. I'm going to check the box. It says my table has headers and there's my table. And we'll come back to that later. But before I leave it, it got a default name of table one. I'm going to call this TBL data and press enter. So that table is named and now we'll go to the list sheet where we're just getting started here too. I've put a heading regions and these are the four regions. These four are going to become column headings and we have to match exactly. So you can't type Americas here and try to match America up here. And an easy way to do that is to select and copy, then click where you want the headings to go, and for paste, choose transpose. So I'm going to pause for a minute and enter some data here. Next, I'm going to turn this into a named table as well. So select any cell, go to home, format as table, select a style, and again, this has headers, so click OK, and there's our table, and this will have all the values in it that we're going to use for the lists. So for this table, I'm going to call it TBL Val. What we've done so far is set up a list of regions, which we'll be able to select from, and then from one of those regions, you'll see a list of areas in that region. If we go back to data entry, we're going to have a drop down here and we're ready now based on what was selected here we can show countries we're going to add a couple more table columns to show some areas in some of our countries and some cities so back here we've got all of these areas that we could use as column headings i'm going to put a couple over here let's do uk and Canada. Now we can put some of the regions from the UK 
and some of the Canadian provinces. So if you pick one of those, you'll have another list that you can select from. And we'll take one more look at our data entry sheet. So now we can select a region and a country. And say you picked Canada here, now you'd be able to pick some provinces. And we'll make just a couple more columns in our values table with some cities. I'm going to add headings that match what we've got in our list. So England and Ontario. And now I'll put a couple of cities in these lists and I'll be right back. Okay, I have two more columns now, England and Ontario and cities within those areas. And so this table, we could keep expanding if we wanted details for any of these other items, but this will give us enough to set up our drop-down lists. Next, we're going to create three named ranges. One will just be a list of these regions, and the other two will help us build a list based on our previous selection. So these will create the dependent lists for our drop-downs. I'm going to explain what the formulas do, but if you're not interested, you can just copy and paste from the sample file, put those into your workbook, and then skip ahead to the section where we create the drop-down lists. We're going to be creating drop-down lists on our other sheet, and to do that, we're going to be referring to named ranges where the values are that we want to show in each list. Our first list is going to be regions, and we could add more regions, but it's always going to be this column that the values will come from. So we're going to create a named range called underscore regions, and it's going to have this formula as its definition. We'll use the index function to look through table val, the regions column, and get the first row and the first column. So that will be this cell where our range starts. Then it goes down using the index function in that column again. Go down based on the count A, so count any items in that column. There are four values here, so it will start here and go down to the fourth row. So I'm going to copy this with control C and then to create the name, I'll go into Formulas, Name Manager, New, and here's where I'll type underscore regions. I'll use the underscore so that will show up at the top of the list of names. And here, I'll widen this a bit. I'm going to delete what's in there and paste with control V. Well, there's a space there, so I'm getting rid of that. So there's my formula and I'll click OK. And now if I click down in this box, it highlights that list for me. So we've set it up correctly. I'll click close. We've set up one named range, regions, and we have two more to set up. The next one is main list, and it's going to give us a column out of this table of all our items that we've created. I'm going back to the data entry sheet, and I've just typed some values in here, a region and a country from that region, so we can see how this formula is going to work. It is going to use index and it will look at the TBL val, which is this table. We have to tell it which row and which column. For the row, we're going to use a zero, and that means return all the rows in that column. We have to find the column that matches whatever it is we want to see as a list. So here, if we're in area, we want to see the Canada list. If we were here, we'd want to see the Europe list. To find that number of the column, we have to look for something in the headers. And we're going to use index to find out where we are in this table, which is called TBL data. 
look at what column number we're in right now and subtract the column where this little table starts and that's going to tell you where to look for our value. So here index TBL data this means the entire row. So if I'm here I'm in column 4 starts in 2 which means look in the second column. So this named range is going to give us a full column. So in this cell, it should come over to Canada and it will select this whole list. If we were in this row and looking at UK, it would select the whole list. So there'd be a blank cell here. In other columns, there might not be blanks. Our next named range will take care of the blanks, but for now we want to find the entire column based on whatever we selected in the cell to the left. So I'm going to copy this formula and then go to Formulas, Name Manager, create a new name, and this is going to be called underscore main list, and paste the formula here click OK and there's our main list if I click inside here it's not finding anything because I'm not in a cell with something beside it so I'm going to click up here for area go back in name manager and click and now it's highlighting that list for Canada so that's doing what we need it to do Now we'll create a third named range, and this one will be used for the drop-down lists. We're going to call this Use List, and it is going to be based on the one we just created called Main List. So in this example, UK, Main List would be all these cells in this column. The Use List will count those items and just return a list of cells that have items in them. It won't include the blank cells. Here's the formula that we're going to use. So we'll index the main list, starting from the first row and cell, down to in that main list, to a count of items in the main list. I'm going to copy that formula and go to the name manager, create a new name, call this use list, and I'm going to paste in the formula that I copied. Click OK and click close. So if I'm in this area cell for America's Canada and go to the name manager and click use list, it shows the list of the Canadian provinces. The final step is to set up the drop down lists. We're going to have one drop down for the regions and then a different drop down for all the other columns. I'm going to clear out all the data in this table, just delete it and select the two regions cells. To add the drop downs, go to data, validation, select list. And for the source, if you're on a Windows computer, click in the source box and press the F3 key and it will bring up a list. If you don't have this shortcut available, you can type equals and then a list name. For this, we're going to use regions and click OK. OK, and now you can select a region in each of those rows. I'm going to choose Europe and Americas. Now we're going to set up the drop downs that are dependent on the previous cell in all of the other columns. So I've selected all of them data validation, list, and for the source, again, I'll press F3. And this time we want the use list. So this is our dependent list. It will show a list based on what was selected in the column to the left. Click OK and OK. So now if I have selected Europe, the countries show Europe. So I can select any one of those. I'll select UK. And for that country, we have areas. And we could choose a city as well. For the Americas, if I select a country, I can 
choose Canada. It has areas. I'll choose Ontario because I set up cities for those. If I press tab to start a new row and then choose a region that doesn't have all the details, I can still choose one of the countries. But when I get to area, I haven't set up anything for China, so the drop down list just won't work. For more Excel tips and tutorials, and to download the sample file for this video, please visit my Contextures website at www.contextures.com.